Hello, I'm Sergeant Warren Mitchell, Dallas Police Department, and welcome to Dallas PD Roundtable Talk. I have with me Sergeant Raja Jones with the uh, Dallas Police Department, and this month we are discussing prostate cancer because November is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, and Raja here is has had prostate cancer, from what I understand, and is a survivor. Raja, would you introduce yourself? Roger Jones, I'm assigned to the basic cadet and I teach all these training for basic cadet service on Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking time out to come and have this discussion with us. I know that uh, it can't be easy discussing something so personal, but uh, we do appreciate it. We definitely want to bring this awareness to uh, all men throughout the country. And so, you coming here, I take my hat off to you. So, let me, let me ask you, Roger. When, when, when did you find out? I went to do my uh, driver's physical for the police department and uh, didn't pass the patient test. Uh, so in doing so, they seemed to find their doctor. When I went to the primary doctor, I just went ahead and did my physical while I was there. Uh, doing that year physical, I can't say that was uh, elevated. Doing that just made it to the uh, diagnosis. So, I guess, how, how did you feel when the doctor had to tell you you have prostate cancer? <clears throat> well, uh, being a person that thought I was as tough as I was, mm -hmm. to have something like that come up, it's really uh, kind of quite crazy. Uh, on top of me thinking I was as tough as I was, uh, just being the uh, stability for my family. Mm -hmm. Not only my personal and my household, but my parents and brothers. So it's pretty devastating. And I think a lot of people get that impression that, you know, when you're a police officer, that you encounter, you know, some of the worst that society has. But then, you know, some people fail to realize that we're human as well. And so I guess receiving such news, I mean, we quickly start thinking the worst of things, but then at the same time, I guess you had to realize that you still had to be strong for your family. Yeah. So did you did you notify your family immediately or did you keep this information to yourself? Well, actually, I, I kept it to myself uh, from my household. Now I did talk to my dad because I knew at about the same age he had had issue with prostate as well. Is that right? So I did talk to my dad. So when did you decide to uh, open up? Um, I went through the process of uh, doctor visits and all over six months before I actually told my house. I, I actually had the, the uh, confirmation. Oh my goodness. Huh? So I guess that's a, that's a lot of load to carry within yourself. I mean, I guess that's, we as men sometimes feel like that we don't want to burden anybody. Do you think that was the best way you felt you, you that handled exactly, that at the time? Exactly what it was, was because I, everybody looked at me with such such the, the strength and the, the guidance mm -hmm. at home. I was just like, wow, here, here I am doing this. I said, let, me, let me figure it out. See, maybe I can fix it before I have to say anything to right, else. Right. And, and, and probably I'd have to ask for help. Right, right. That was probably. So would you have done anything different or you think uh, just? Um, I definitely would have made the, made it known earlier. For the su did. support that, right? But I did. I did have uh, some backlash by keeping to myself. Right. So I, I had all the support I needed. I just just been trying to do it. Um, okay. Okay. So, what about your, your DPD family? Did you let everybody at work know, or the supervisors? Like this kind of. I I had a couple people that I I let know. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, if I can call names, but the supervisor I was working for at the mm -hmm. time, I told. Them. I would say that was Chief Audio. Right. And that was the, the biggest support. Right. That, was, that was some officers in the police department that I had heard or known that they had dealt with the same thing. Uh, but the command staff, actually the command staff. Mm -hmm. And I was able to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I tell you, that really took a load off. Exactly. Uh, yeah. that, was, that was probably the greatest support I could get. Stopping to something. Right, right. 
Well, that's good. That's good because I think, you know, it seems like when you hold things in, and again, we as police officers, you know, we're here, I guess, to fix everybody else's problem. But then when it's time to get our own problems fixed, we tend to, to withdraw and, and keep it within, figure it out, like fix what itself. I was to do. Yeah. Fix my own, I yeah. Have somebody else fix it. Well, that's good to know. I mean, because <clears> I think information like that needs to be known, you know, for, you know, anybody else who happens to be you know, stricken with such a, a horrible disease, you know, and instead of trying to tough it out on their own, you know, because uh, feeling the love from family and friends, I think, always heals most problems, you know. Okay. So, uh, uh, let me ask you this. So, when you went to work, where were you assigned at the time that you found out you, you had I was an admin sergeant on the sixth floor. Okay, okay. So you were dealing, you had your employees having to deal with issues, employee issues there, and then had your own personal issue. Did you find out, uh, did you feel that it had any effect in you performing your job? I don't think it had any uh, effect on my job or public support. Right? Mm -hmm. As I meet people, I told the chief what was going on. That was, was when I was having to go back and forth to the doctor. Each month, I was able to go over these tests and, and watching uh, samples and stuff else. Uh, I went through a couple of different biopsies. The first one was egg biopsy and a stomach. Right. So I, I okay. was keeping the uh, supervisor of what I was doing. So I was actually coming to work. I was at probably the best physical shape of my life. Is that right? I was at CrossFit working out every day. But if you if looked at me, you didn't see that. But, when I got out for the ride home, it was something different. Right. I did what I needed to do when I was. Okay. Okay, good. So, uh, would you uh, have any encouraging words to, to other men who, uh, who who come around for their yearly physical? I mean, yeah, you encourage them to get tested. Uh, I said, I, I, had, I was doing this for already. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, when I went in with the sky, uh, they, were, they actually were telling me it, it wasn't, hadn't been in for a year. Wait until the actual four years pass, probably like one year. Mm -hmm. They actually got to do the test. I would say definitely get tested because if, if somebody looked at me, or even today, people don't know that it's they're, they're coming out. People I never told a lot of people. Right. You just never know how to get tested. And I tell you, you know, I've known you for many years. In fact, we used to work together in personnel, and I'd see you in the hallways, and, and you're right, I, I, I'd never you know, had a clue that you, you were struggling with prostate cancer. And uh, and that's a testament to, to you. And, uh, you know, from what I understand of you, you know, you you have a, a faith in a higher being, you know, and I believe. Okay, good, good. I'm, I'm ordained deacon in that way since May of 1990. Is that right? Okay. I, was, I, I said to you earlier, I said, this, this really doesn't define me, but right. my life is my family, church, home. So. Yeah. Right. I love what I do and I do it because this is part of who I am. Mm -hmm. I like it. I am the church. Exactly. As it should be. Good. Good. I'll tell you. Uh, well, I mean, you know, we just came out of uh, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, Chief Brown allowed those to wear the pink epaulets. And, uh, and, you know, we got a lot of uh, positive feedback from that because it was a good thing that that the department also recognized, you know, not only Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but as well as the prostate cancer. So uh, at least I think we're a 21st century police department, you know, in recognizing those issues that are concerns to, to our community. So, I mean, share your thoughts on that. Well, I, um, in the last couple of years, I've actually tried to get more involved in mm -hmm. And actually, it actually started just before I was diagnosed. So I, I believe, I, I thank Chief Brown, the, the city, the police department, everybody being involved. Uh, I am having to get in with uh, breast cancer awareness, but I, I know that's the STEM for it. It comes this cancer period. I think we all ought to be involved. To deal with it, to cope with it, to heal. Amen, amen. Well, Roger, I definitely appreciate you stopping by.
sharing your experience with us. I mean, uh, like I say, you look fit. You look like you you ready to start the academy all over again. <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna be this evening. <laughs> it, you need to get tested. Like yeah. Said, I, the test really saved me. Like, like, Amen to that. Uh, the doctor said you, you can live with it. But, mm -hmm. you know, end result if you don't get yourself tested. Because early detection is so important. So again, thank you, Rod. Yes, sir. appreciate you. Yes, sir. Well, that's it for roundtable discussion. Uh, join us next time.